So far, my only experience with real Neo Geo hardware is my MV1C arcade board and this minigun super gun. And while this has been a pretty good solution for playing real Neo Geo games, I have a couple problems with it. Super guns stick pretty far out from the arcade board, so sometimes I'm worried about this JAMA connector being damaged. And they usually are powered by an external power supply, which can lead to things like exposed power supply leads. You don't really want to mess with that kind of thing. Not to mention that unless you have an aftermarket case, the arcade board is pretty exposed, leading to things like dust getting everywhere, and you could even damage some of the components on the arcade board itself. The OpenMVS project designed by Taytok Labs is a set of PCBs in a 3D printed case that's designed to turn these MV1C arcade boards into a fully enclosed console version of a Neo Geo arcade board. I ordered one of the PCB kits and I 3D printed my own case, so let's jump over to the bench and I'll show you how it all goes together. I bought this MV1C on eBay, so the first thing that I did was I tested it with my minigun to make sure that it actually worked. And everything worked fine, so let's go ahead and move on to the installation steps. I looked to see if I can find any official installation instructions for the OMVS project, and the only thing that I could find was the retro RGB video about how to do the installation, so that's what I'm going to be referencing in this video. The first thing that we're going to do is take this black shell off. Normally there's a battery soldered onto these points on the motherboard here, but it looks like they just kind of cut this off on this board. The board still works without the battery holder, but I'm going to go ahead and install this replaceable battery holder onto the board here. If your board still has a battery holder, you can either cut the legs off with some side cutters, or you can flip this over and desolder the legs from the bottom side here. Since mine are already cut off, I don't have to really worry about that. I really like how Bob mounted this battery holder in his video, so I'm going to do the same with this console. Basically you're going to solder the point that sticks out on the top of the battery holder here to this top positive point right here and the bottom part of the holder is going to get soldered to this piece of the ground plane right here on the board. So I'm going to use my scratch pen here to remove this solder mask. Looks like there's a little bit of corrosion in these old battery terminals. So I just went ahead and scratched them with a scratch pen and I'm going to put a tiny bit of solder on them just to kind of get some of that corrosion off. And then I'm going to take it back off some solder braid just so that these are flat, but it covers up any of the corrosion here. With that out of the way, I'm just going to tin this ground pad a little bit. I guess I'll tin the positive pad too. And then I'm going to go ahead and solder the positive side first, making sure to line the negative side up here with that part that I tinned up here. All right, now I'm gonna do the negative side. Hopefully this battery holder doesn't melt. I think that's good, but I'm gonna hit it with a little bit more solder and flux. Okay, I think that's pretty solid. I ordered the rechargeable 2032 batteries, but I don't have them yet. So I'm just gonna use this non-rechargeable 2032 just to test to make sure that I'm not hitting this chip here with this battery holder. Hey, that's pretty good. And I'm gonna take it back out because you're not supposed to use non-rechargeable batteries in here. With the battery holder installed, the next thing we have to do is remove this op amp here. Now, unfortunately, my desoldering gun kind of, well, had a bad day, so I'm gonna have to do this by hand. But that's really okay if you have one of these heavy duty aluminum solder suckers with the silicone tip. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is unscrew the op amp heat sink from the op amp itself. Wow, this, this screw is really stubborn. I tried to unscrew the heat sink from the op amp here, but I ended up just stri stripping the screw a little bit. I'm not sure if that just means it is a little rusty or it's kind of glued on there, but I think I'm gonna have to try a different approach to desolder both the heat sink and the op amp at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip the board over and I'm gonna suck the solder out of both the big holes here for the heat sinks and all of these little pins right below it for the op amp itself. First thing first is to add some fresh solder. And first I'm gonna to try to get some solder out of these big holes here. I think I needed to turn my soldering iron up a little bit because this is a heat sink on the other side. 
think I added, need to add a little bit more solder. Okay, I think that's pretty good on the heat sink pins. Let's do these small pins down here. Don't forget to turn your heat down. I think these ones down here are pretty good, but let's hit these ones up here with some fresh solder and the sucker again. Boy, that was really a challenge. But I finally got all those pins desoldered and then the heat sink and the op amp just kind of fell out. It's times like this where I really miss my desoldering gun. This would have been no problem. It's been a few days since I removed this op amp and I actually got that rechargeable 2032 battery in. So let's go ahead and put that into the battery holder. And the last bit of soldering we have to do is with these red and black wires here. We're gonna have to solder them to a few legs on this chip down here to get left and right stereo audio. I'm gonna strip and tin these wires and I'm gonna pre-tin the left and right side of this chip down here. We're gonna solder the black wire to the left and the red wire to the right. So it looks something like that. Now that we're done with our soldering, let's go ahead and bring the bottom 3D printed piece in. We need to go ahead and first install the power jack in the back of the case here. Alright, with that installed, let's go ahead and install the AV port in the back here. And then go ahead and use these screws labeled controller and AV port and screw down the AV port on both sides. And now in the front of the case, we're gonna put the JAMA board in. And we're gonna use the rest of our controller and AV port screws. Next, let's connect the power jack as well as the ribbon cable that connects the JAMA video out to the AV jack in the back. And next let's try to wedge this MV1C board underneath here. Don't forget to connect the red and white wire that we soldered earlier as well to the AV jack. And now with the MV1C in the case, let's go ahead and secure it with these main bore corner screws. Before I finish putting the case together, I'm gonna go ahead and test the system. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and install this NeoBIOS Master and this UniBIOS 4.0 that I've had for a long time. And that's pretty easy. If you look at the underside of the NeoBIOS Master, it says top of the 68,000. If we turn the console and we zoom in to see the text of this chip here, if you can read the text, then that means that this is the top of the chip. So we're gonna go ahead and put the NeoBIOS Master on and push down. And as long as everything is flush up here, you should be all set. And everything seemed to work well, except for when I tried to use the UniBIOS 4.0 through the NeoBIOS Master. I think I might have a bad ROM, although this is the second ROM chip that I have that had the UniBIOS 4.0 on it. I can't ever seem to get it to work, even though the socket is flush with the chip down here. The console just boots to this garbled screen and it never really boots. So I'm not sure what's up with that, but I'm not gonna include that right now. Let's go ahead and prepare the top shell now. I have to add this LED into the hole down here, but in my case, it's kind of loose, so I'm gonna go ahead and use some hot glue. It may not look great, but it's gonna keep this LED in place. And then there's this little lens thingy that has to go in a hole in the front of the case. All right, that looks pretty good. 
Next, we have to add this piece of plexiglass behind the MVS logo here. And I'm actually gonna leave this brown sticker part here because it's not really gonna see through the front side of the plexiglass here, and it'll just protect the acrylic on the back. Next, I'm just gonna remove the stickers here on the double-sided tape on the acrylic. Then let's go ahead and stick the acrylic behind the MVS logo. Unfortunately, my 3D printer kind of broke a piece of the S part here, but I'm gonna print that little line there and stick it on with some double-sided tape afterwards, and you won't really be able to tell from far away. Only thing we have left to do now is install this LED down here. Then we're gonna put the top on through those buttons in the front here. And then very carefully, we're gonna make sure that all the wires are out of the way and then try to get the top shell over the back here and make sure none of our wires are pinched. Then I'm gonna flip everything over and install the five bottom screws here. Now let's slip the slot cover in and this little brace. And screw in the screws. And there's the finished product. I think that the OpenMVS project is really the ultimate MV1C. This is gonna be the main way that I play Neo Geo games. Before I wrap this up, I wanna make a couple of corrections. I wanna point out this piece of paper that I guess I didn't read before I put the kit together. The kit actually comes with one of those rechargeable 2032 batteries. I don't know why I didn't notice this at first, so I didn't even really need to buy one. Also, when I was screwing together the OpenMVS, I noticed that the MV1C motherboard wasn't really sitting flat in the case. I reached out to Avram CE on Twitter. He said that if the JAMA connector that's soldered into that that front controller board is a little bit misaligned. It might cause the front of the MV1C board to be raised up a little bit. And in that case, you wanna leave those front two screws on the board loose so that you're not bending the MV1C board in the front. Over time, if any part of the board is flexing, you might cause damage to that JAMA connector or even some of the components on the board. So make sure that nothing is flexing when you have your MV1C seated in the case. And another thing from this piece of paper where it says 5X bottom shell screws, shorter for middle brace. The five screws for the bottom of the case are not all the same size. This one up here in the middle is shorter than all the other ones, so make sure you put the short screw in this top middle hole. Thanks for watching me put my open MVS together. If you like mod installation tutorials or other retro electronic projects, be sure to get subscribed so that you don't miss any of my videos. And give this video a like if it helped you out with your own open MVS. I'll see you in the next video.